Critical hit Punch All Nazis takes place in the early days of World War II and combines high adventure with cosmic horror. All dates, locations, and historical events are thrown out the window in order to create a fun story, so don't put too much thought into historical inaccuracies. All accents are done poorly, but with love, and no disrespect is intended. Last time. Um, We demand a sacrifice. Shoot at the ghoul that just tried to uh, eat me. Dick some amount of his new tie into the flask and then light it on fire. But before any of you can do something, there is a gunshot and the German's head just kind of explodes. The elevator doors close. Clark Gable turns around and looks at the uh, group of you, looks down at Valentino's gun. You know how to use that thing? More or less. I tell you what, you boys get me out of here into the airport. I'll get you anywhere you need to go. Deal? Sounds good. All right. Now, listen. I know these crazy Nazis are after me. And uh, fortunately, I've got uh, uh, Jimmy here. Yeah, that's right, sir. I'm I'm here to help you out. Um, you boys follow my directions to the letter, and we will be able to get out of here and to safety without a problem. Now, let me describe where we're going to go. My car is parked out back. The elevator doors are going to open, and of course, uh, and I guess I guess I should. You guys should know the layout of the of the hotel. You don't need uh, Clark Gable to explain it to you, but I will explain it to you. Uh, so the elevators, there's two of them, uh, side by side. You are on the one that is, I guess if you were to exit out, you are the ones that are farthest to the left. So the elevators are in a little cubicle area to your left, then opens up into the main lobby of the hotel. If you turn left and you're looking into the lobby, you're going to see a little, um, hallway immediately to your left that goes back to like custodial and to, the doorway that leads into the area where the, um, the front desk person would be. Uh, there's some potted plants there. And then there's the front desk that runs a good 15, 20 feet and curves around and, and occupies a large uh, corner, the left-hand corner uh, of the, of the lobby on the right side is a little newsstand. And next to that is a little like a, a bar area, an internal bar, Uh, For the hotel. Then as you would be on the far right of that big square that is the lobby would be the entrance. And of course, they've got the nice revolving door. And of course, two entrances for that in the upper right hand corner of the lobby would be a seating area, a nice lounge area where people can gather and meet with one another, those kinds of things. Then immediately to the north part of the lobby or from where you're facing is a more traditional restaurant. Uh, where people can come in and sit down. It's the hotel restaurant, but certainly people can come in from off the streets Uh, to the upper left-hand corner. uh, You have like concierge desk, uh, you know, some other knickknack loungewear, uh, not loungewear, but lounge area, piano, et cetera. And between the check-in desk and that piano area is another hallway that would then lead you down into the back part of the hotel. Everyone got a good idea of, of how that works. Roughly. Good, good, good rough idea of this. So ideally you need to go out the elevator, turn left, run past the uh, check-in desk, turn left and get down that hallway to get out the back door of the, of the hotel. Wow. Such, okay. such intense description for a place we'll never see again. Once we say narratively, anyway, we go to the airport. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do have some problems because on the other side of this door, if you remember, there were two Nazis or two German fellows that were, you know, chiseled chins and blonde hair and blue eyes, both with guns. One of them is currently lying dead at your feet, bleeding out onto the elevator uh, floor. The other one's on the other side of the closed elevator door. And in fact, he reminds you of that. When you see two big indentions uh, come at you into the door, just because he shot at you from the other side. 
just now he shot at us? Oh, yeah. The door's closed. He shot at you. He was, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. He's not the Nazis are not the smartest people, Matthew, if you haven't figured that out. No, these these guys seem to be dumb as bags of hammers. Yeah. So uh, what That's you're going to have to do, bag. what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get past <laughs> that Nazi through the lobby and then out the back door. So we're going to do this in a series of successes that you will each describe what you're going to do during each of the setups as as I describe them to you. One of you will get to go first and then something will happen and I will tell you, OK, uh, who's going to go next. And until we complete a complete round, you're not allowed to go again. So it's a typical skills challenge kind of thing. OK, so the first okay. thing that you need to do is deal with the Nazi who's on the other side of this door. Who would like to deal with that? So I'm going to pretty much take a crouching position on one knee and point this uh, machine gun towards okay. the door. And so one, one, thing, one thing that I might remind you, although I should just let you do it and it'll be hysterical. You don't have any bullets for this gun. Remember, oh. you ran out of bullets down in the catacomb. Yeah. Yeah. So consider that your freebie here, Brian, because that would have All been right. somewhat hysterical. And that maybe is me being bad as a GM, not uh, <laughs> telling you that. So, I mean, I feel like you're actually my pistol. Well, that's a question. Did did uh, Doc give you back your pistol? Uh, can we decide right now, narratively, that we did? Because it seems like the kind of thing that we would have done. I mean, you seem pretty excited about having two weapons. <laughs> And he did have a big machine gun. I mean, have if you want to John Woo this thing. Um, ooh, do I want to John Woo this thing? I mean, mm. we don't have any doves. But... <laughs> um, okay. That idea that he just had, uh -huh. Doc is going to do that with two pistols instead of one machine gun. Okay. Uh, okay. So what I need you to do is mm -hmm. I need you to roll a uh, ranged attack. Uh, this okay. is going to be coordination and fighting uh, difficulty of two, because this is a tight space. There's a lot of people around. You pull out your uh, describe your describe your actions as the elevator door starts to slowly open. And the doves are flying through the lobby and there's rain outside. <laughs> <laughs> broken glass, broken glass all throughout the throughout the lobby now. The wild eyed look that's generally in Doc's eye settles down for a moment. Okay. And for a moment, he looks completely centered Great. and fine. Great. And as the door opens, he fires and fires and fires. All right. Let us take a moment and talk about something that happened last time on, on the show. Uh, mm -hmm. Because when you had the two pistols, you were talking about uh, wanting to dual wield. And so mm -hmm. I said at the time, I knew that there was a dual wield feature in the game, but um, but I needed to to track it down. And there's not a specific dual wield uh, attack for like, mm -hmm. quote unquote, regular players. But there is a character, uh, Renee Dubois, I believe is her is her name. Dubois is her last name. She is an expert and she does have a dual wield attack. And so I don't feel like dual wielding is something that is specialized that only one person in the entire universe of this game would have. So I'm just taking her special rule. And allowing you to use it. So if you look in your uh, cheat sheet section, I already uh, uh, told you a little bit about it the other day, but yep. you can do this when you are dual wielding. And this goes for really anybody who dual wields. You may choose to focus fire on a single foe. If you choose focus fire, you add plus two to the stress inflicted uh, and you also get an intense effect. It's not a salvo attack. It doesn't consume any ammo. You can if you don't want to focus fire. You can choose to make two separate attacks mm. in your turn. Do we have any momentum? We have you one have momentum. one momentum. Okay. So if I take two separate attacks. Yep. You could, you have two chances to, to hit this guy. And I could, of two. I could theoretically spend a momentum, uh, for a difficulty of two and then still have an attack left if that doesn't take him out. Is that correct? Yep. Ooh, that sounds like it might be a good way to go. All right. So the door is opening. Okay. And, and the good thing, the gun in your left hand is the one that's going to have the clear line of sight uh, first. So okay. roll, roll that attack. I would like to use the momentum. So that would be rolling three dice, three dice, and it would be 
And it would be my standard scribbity. Ah, three successes. So you do get one momentum back. Good. And you get a uh one of the successes you need for for this scene. Cool. Uh so yes. Now the go ahead. The intense that you said. Yeah, so that's just an effect uh on okay. the weapon. Um it really doesn't do anything, especially since you hit him uh and okay. he goes down. Um, you can find the effects of weapons in the player's manual. I was just looking, trying to inf- uh, find it uh, as we were talking because you may want to use it later. Uh, it's on page 35. Okay. Intense. If the attack inflicts an injury and an effect is rolled, the attack inflicts an additional injury, which uh, in this case, uh, you hit the guy. You succeeded in hitting him right in his throat. He grabs it oh. as he's dropping his gun and he goes down. Cool. Clark Gable so looks. Uh, yeah. Clark Gable looks at you as I like your wild eye kid. And I loved uh, you and mutiny in the bounty, sir. Uh, well, that's hey, good to I know do my research. Sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. We'll see how much you've done your research. All right. The elevator <laughs> doors are open. Uh, what are you guys? Uh, what are you guys going to do? I think I'll kind of run out uh, doing a crouching run ahead to look at basically any intersections and see if there's okay. anyone else incoming. Sure. So you would need, what are you going to roll for that? Brian insight. Okay. And I guess observation. Sure. Let's do insight and observation difficulty two. I do have a focus. Uh, well, if, uh, what's focus your focus in sight yeah. would, uh, give me two successes with that. So what is your, what is your, um, is an observation two only two. No, my observation is five. Oh, sorry. I'm looking at the wrong column. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Two successes on that. Uh, you step out and sure enough, you, it looks like over by the piano area, it looks like there's some movement over there. I'll kind of like signal that way to the rest of the guys. Okay. Unfortunately, Whatever. you kind of have to move that direction uh, to get to it. Are you guys going to surround Clark Gable at all? Or are you going to like put him in the back or, or, or where, where is he positioned? Um, I feel like he yeah. should be in the middle. Yeah, we'll try to get him into the middle. Okay, so you're going to surround him. All right, uh, so you start to move down slowly, cautiously through the lobby. Uh, as you are passing by the check-in counter, you hear, Oh, Mr. Cable, checking out so soon. And you turn and you look and you see the check-in clerk pulling a machine gun out from behind the uh. counter as he gets ready to open fire on you. Who would like to do an action? Uh, I'll go. Okay. Go ahead, Rob. What are you going to do, Rob? Uh, I'm going to try and return fire on the uh, clerk before he has a chance. <laughs> okay. So you're going to have to do a fast action. So this is going to um, let's do this in two rolls. I'm going to break this into two D one tests for you. The first one is how quick you are to uh, draw the weapon, unless you have a quick draw effect with your, with a talent or anything. I do not. Okay. So we probably need to do a coordination and athletics to see how fast you would uh, draw your weapon. Ah, very Got good. It. You whip that gun out, you fire. And then I assume coordination and yep, fighting. Cord- coordination and fighting. Oh! Son of a crap. That gun goes wide oh, no. and the uh, check-in clerk starts to just spray all of you with bullets uh, fortunately, he misses most of you, except he clips Clark Gable right along the brow line and he goes down and Jimmy looks and says, oh, no, this is this is not good. Uh, we I need somebody to help pick up Mr. Gable as we get out of here. So who's the only other person who's left that hasn't gone? Dutch. Dutch. Can you please use brawn and athletics to see if you can help carry Mr. Clark Gable through the rest of the lobby. Uh, sure. Um, difficulty two. Clark Gable's a pretty tall guy. Uh, I'll spend a momentum on that. All right. Uh, zero successes. Oh no, that's not good. Zero successes. Um, you try to get him up under your arm, uh, you know, under your, uh, his arm over you, you try to get under his arm, but he's, Mm. you catch a whiff of his breath, Rodrigo there's a there's a reason why he was coming in at midnight he kind of smells of booze pretty bad 
And so that's making it a little bit more difficult to carry carry Clark Gable through through the lobby, which is unfortunate okay. because the the clerk continues to spray the the area that you are all in. <laughs> click, 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 click. Top of the round. Who would like to go at this point? When we hit a top of the round in this instance, I'm going to let any of you decide who you want, uh, who wants to go. So Jimmy is kind of like uh, really struggling to carry Clark Gable uh, on on his back. Would I be the closest to the front desk? Yeah, probably. Okay. Uh, can I try to just like, once it starts clicking, vault over it and club him with the... Oh yeah, describe it, describe it for me, Brian. <laughs> yeah, basically I... Uh, I just kind of roll over and then jump and vault over just with the right, the uh, nuzzle of the rifle in both hands and just okay. try to swing it at sure. his head. Sure, yeah, uh, that would be a club effect. So that, let me look it up really quick because there is a bat that is in here. I'm sure I'm terrible at this. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's, I have to look and see if it is a, um, I don't I mean, think who's good at be, anything? <laughs> I, I don't think it's going to be a ranged attack. I, I think it's probably going to be a, a bat. Uh, let's see. A bat is a melee weapon, so you will need to do a agility and fighting on agility, this. Agility, say. Yeah, agility and fighting to swing the the gun at him to try to knock the clerk out. Mm, Ooh, not how dare momentum. you? What's that? No, there's no momentum. Oh, uh, yep. So agility is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what? All right, that did not. <laughs> Uh, either uh, way, no. those failed. <laughs> uh, it's it swings and he takes a poke at you and uh, clips uh, clips your your sore arm, your arm that has ah. been badly burned. Take one physical damage. Okay. The rest of you can continue to move a little bit towards the other end of the counter. At which point you can see over in the piano bar, a man stands up and is very scared because he's just heard all of this gunshot stuff. And he's just like looking all around and makes a running dive to the restaurant and slides into the into the door. Is Clark Gable considered an ally or is he like an NPC? Or? He's an NPC. OK, so I would not necessarily be able to use my medic ability to stabilize him. Oh, you could. You could definitely do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. To like, would I be able to wake him up? You might. Why don't you try it? How are you going to do it? Tell us how you're going to do it, Matthew. Tell us I'm how Doc's going to. I'm going to grab the smelling salts and a bandage out of my bag, and I'm going to do it by feel. And I'm literally going to take the bandage, slap it on his forehead, put the smelling salts right to his nose, and I'm going to go, Mr. Gable, Mr. Gable, All right. call time is 9 a.m. <laughs> I don't know if that Action, is Mr. Gonna, Gable. I don't know if that's going to, to work on him, but you definitely need to make a uh, medicine check. Uh, and right. so this would be a first aid. So you need to do insight plus medicine difficulty insight one. Oh, this is my best skill. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a doctor as far as you know. No. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Hang on. Now, this well, this was a fun campaign <laughs> while it lasted. <laughs> this is, this, here's my question. I accidentally used an extra die. Uh, so tell me, so tell me, Matthew, so, what is your, shall I, shall I re-roll those? <laughs> nope. Tell me, Matthew, uh, under your yes. medicine, uh, what uh -huh. is, what is your focus in medicine? Tell me all your focuses in medicine. My foci in medicine are first aid. Yeah. And surgery. Ah, kind of like what you're doing right now. So, uh, that, uh, five that you have can yes. also serve as a as a bonus, you know, to to getting those successes, but it also mm -hmm. increases the complication range. And so oh. even if we throw out the 20 that you rolled, the 19 mm -hmm. would still very much be around. <clears throat> and you just hear Gable say, eh, my call time's always at 11. Well, that's my move. All right. Uh, we have Valentino. Uh, fighting with the clerk, we've got uh, Jimmy dragging Clark Gable across the floor, somewhat conscious, starting to maybe come around, but because of the complications, not fully alert yet. Anyone want to help out? Uh, help out Valentino or Jimmy? Or uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I'll 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 help out Valentino. Okay. When uh, basically as Valentino's like wrestling, trying to get the machine gun away with the other guy. 
Um, the moment the clerk's uh, head pops out from behind the thing, uh, Dutch is going to shoot him. Oh, okay. So go ahead and do a do a ranged attack. You're using handguns, so that gives you a bonus into that. Two successes, or you need two successes so you don't accidentally hit Valentino. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use my last fortune. Ooh, okay. So I've got two successes. Let's see if I get anything else. Okay. I do. Nice, very nice. You add one one momentum back into the pool. Yeah, you you plug the the clerk and he just goes down. Oh, uh, and collapses uh, in a heap. Can I say something? Yes. Uh, Dutch will be like, all right, snap to it, soldiers. Doc, give him his gun back. And just like try to get Bug Eater out the front door so he can start the car. Well, not out the front door, door out the back door. Out the back door. Okay. You still need, oh man, you still need one more success to get out of this, out of this building. And as, let's see, who has not gone? Oh, Bug Eater. As you are running down this back hallway, the kitchen door opens and out comes a Nazi with a butcher knife blocking your path. I'm going to charge him. Okay. Like, <laughs> you're just going to run right into, you're just going to just pick up speed and just go at him full yeah. force. All right. Agility and fighting. I'm going to spend a fortune on this. Okay. <laughs> Look, my agility plus fighting is an eight. All right, it's better than uh, what better than mine. Better than uh, <laughs> Valentino's. Yeah, but like, I'm rolling real well today. So, all right, well, you've got two successes just from the fortune. You still need to roll one more die to see if you get another success to add to your momentum, in. <laughs> and you do. You get two successes. You roll the one. Very good. Uh, yeah, you just you see this guy step out with this butcher knife. And you just put your head down. Did you play? Did you go? You didn't go to college, but you played probably football yeah. in high school at, uh, at back in Nebraska. No, he went to college before you. Ah, went okay. To, um, okay. Did he, did he play football? Probably. Definitely All right. now. All right. You just put your head down and you just barrel into this guy. And it's just like when you were uh, fighting uh, or playing against, uh, uh, who would you play against? Uh, this uh, young school, Kansas this University. Kansas, of course. Yeah. yeah, so you're running right in like he's a Kansas University running back, and you tackle this guy, and you just hold on to him tight, and you just keep running and pumping your legs all the way to the back door, at which point, because this is not like a glass black back door, it's a solid back door, you just slam him right into that door so hard that he gets knocked out, and you slam him so hard. This is a big guy. You slam him so hard with your powerful leg muscles that you... You uh, have been trained all through your years on the farm, all through your years in college and your last year or so in the military. The doors come off their hinges and both of you go flying out into the back parking lot. Good job. Nice. Good job. Except Jimmy comes running down the hallway, still dragging Clark Gable. I'm trying to take care of Mr. Gable and he throws you the keys. Get the car. You'll know which one it is. And so he throws the keys at you, Bug Eater. I think you can catch them. Yeah, you'll catch them. And uh, you look around, and sure enough, there is a beautiful, beautiful sedan. Highly polished black. It's got curtains on the side. You can tell that this is probably, not only is it a celebrity vehicle, uh, but it's probably got a very powerful engine under the hood. Oh, boy. Uh, and it it may have, you know, because if 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 Clark Gable knows that he is under an, a, you know, a kidnapping plot from from uh, the, the horrible Germans, that that car probably has a little bit more ruggedness than just a traditional car. I was hoping you were going to say ejector seats. No, no, no. It, <laughs> it, I, I, I don't know what the status of bulletproof uh, cars was in the day, but this one's going to be very heavy and with thicker, thicker paneling. Right. Eisenhower can be a magician, but we can't have bulletproof. Cars. Nope. Nope. Not at this time period. Or a check receipt. Wouldn't be real. And who said, who said he was a magician? He could be a sorcerer. Oh, my bad. Oh. Yeah. Uh, he could be a, he could be a wizard. Yeah. So, so every, well, that's, well, that's how he knew 
uh, that's how he addresses himself whenever he goes and sees the vice president. I'm a wizard, Harry. <laughs> uh, so, uh, bug eater, you catch the, the keys and you immediately are going to make a dash to the car. Yeah. Gunshots start ringing out from above firing down at you. If you look up, you can see from the balcony, two Germans on two separate balconies firing down upon you. Bug eater is already gone. Was, were you the last one bug eater on the, on that round? I think so. Okay. Think top, so. top of this round, you need two successes to get everybody into the car. I'll, I'll try to provide cover fire. Okay. So you're going to return fire to one of the Germans that is, that it's up there in the balcony. It's the third, yep. third floor balcony. It's still, I'll, I'll count that as a close range and I'll give you a D one on this one. Yeah. Um, I might go ahead and spend the momentum anyway. Okay. Ooh, uh, three successes. Three successes. Wow. So that yeah. brings you back up to three momentum now. Very nice. Uh, yeah, you just yeah. describe describe how you're returning fire onto the to the German. Uh, basically, uh, the Germans are up on the balcony, shooting down, and then they're uh, like one of the Germans says to the other in German, keep firing. And first there's like a burst of like, um, just like the, the wind, like the, um, material that the balcony is made out of just yeah, like metal. burst. Yeah. Metal yeah. And, yeah. And then, and then immediately after that guy just gives like a spray of blood from a second shot. And like one of the guys goes down. Ah, clunk. Head first, right into the pavement. Okay. What, what does the other German do? Curses in German. All right. Uh, Jimmy is still trying, struggling to get Clark Gable uh, up. It's almost like he could use some help getting Clark Gable into the car. All right. I have a question. Yes. Can I give a gun to Valentino and help Jimmy rush the sure. actor into the car? Yeah. Tell me, describe the whole scene and then we'll, then we'll roll for it. All right. Doc is going to yell, Valentino, heads up. And he's going to toss him a pistol. And then he's going to sweep down under in like a fireman's carry and carefully, as well, carefully as one I, can. In a as you have, as carry. you have described yourself, uh, Matthew, yeah. I'm not sure you're going to yeah. be able to fireman's carry Clark Gable. You're still going to need to okay. assist Jimmy. Uh, a cheese monger's carry, uh, which is much more careful. Uh, and get him into the car using the experience I've had uh, in the past, getting people out of you know situations where they're being shot at because I've I've clearly done that. Yeah, cool. Braun I mean, and we athletics. literally did that like five games ago. Braun plus athletics. Oi! <laughs> Hang on. Let's see. I should probably use what? What do I need for successes? Just one or two? Uh, one one success. Braun plus athletics. Yep. Hmm. I'm going to need to use a momentum. Okay. Okay. Let me make sure I have my left and rights correctly. Take a deep breath. Jimmy. Yes, sir. One success. One success. Uh, so yes, I grab you, his other arm and we get him in the car. You rush him across the parking lot as uh, bug eater starts up the engine. Uh, you're as you, who's going to open the door. Is it going to be you or Jimmy? Who's closest to the door to open it, to get Mr. Gable in. I'm going to grab the door. Mr. Gable is going to be under my left arm and yeah. Jimmy's right. Right. So as you are pushing Gable in, you hear a kapow and Jimmy's like, ow, and screams really loud. He's been shot in the arm, uh, as he tumbles into the car. Uh, fortunately that one shot, which you guys cannot tell where it came from, was the only shot that's fired. And so the rest of the, of the group, uh, Valentino and Dutch, you can also scramble into the car behind, behind Jimmy. Hopefully you're shoving Jimmy in just as let's see. So who has not gone yet in this round? I haven't. Okay. All right. I haven't. Okay. So, uh, let's do Valentino first. What are you going to do? Uh, see if I could figure out where the shots coming from. Okay. So an insight plus, um, uh, what are you going to have to do here? Probably observation again. Yeah, I think so. All right. I'm going to give this a difficulty of two test. Okay. I'll spend one momentum. Okay. 
Uh, just one success. Oh, just one success. You cannot tell where it's coming from. But as you are uh, climbing in, you're going to be the last one. Uh, well, you're not the last one climbing into the car. You hear a whistle, you know, from from one of the dark alleys. And from it comes another guy dressed identical to Jimmy. And he's carrying a large duffel bag. Oh, wait for me, sir. And this guy that's uh, also dressed just like uh, Jimmy jumps in. He looks at you and says, I'm Timmy. So you got Jimmy and Timmy in the car. Dutch, what are you going to do? Oh, you already, uh, you've already went. So it was Valentine. I already went the last turn, one. So, yep. uh, so Bug well, Eater. Well, uh, Bug Eater is the last one. Yeah. yeah Bug everybody's Eater. Everybody's in? Yep. Everybody's in. We are now we into drive. part. <laughs> we are now into part three. Uh, because we are driving, all difficulty rolls are increased by one. Also, the truth for this part is it's extremely foggy. Remember, as you were coming in uh, after midnight, the uh, spooky fog rolled in across the city. And so it's making it very hard to see. So um, everything adds a plus one to the difficulty in this scene. So you are driving down the street as fast as you can or driving down the, the back alley parking lot as fast as you can. And as you get out onto the street, you hear a motorcycle start up and anybody who wants to look, you can see that there are two uh, fellows in black leather trench coats uh, on the motorcycle. One is driving the motorcycle. The other is in a sidecar. And he also has pulled out a pistol and they begin chasing you in the car is a passed out Clark Gable and a shot. Jimmy who would like to go start this round. Uh, should I not get, my action from yeah, the... do it. Well, we completed all the you said we were done with the uh, with the uh, everybody was in the car, so that completes this scene. So, if you want to start this scene, Rob, okay, you can. You said difficulties are at two now, it's at three now. At three now, yeah, uh, awesome. Look at, yeah, or look at your drive happens, yeah, look at your talents too, because you may have a talent that, that will work here. That's why I was verifying what the difficulties were. Yep, all right, and there's a motorcycle. Yeah, there's a motorcycle with a sidecar now chasing behind you. And occasionally you'll hear a ping ping as the gun fires and bounces off the the mm. polished uh, chrome and lacquer of this car. Take out the motorcycle or go forward, guys. I think go forward. Okay. I would agree. We're going to spend a momentum on Born to Drive. Okay. To well, how much momentum do we have? You, oh, we you don't just have use the last one. You use oh. the last one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that'll drop the difficulty by one. Okay, so uh, D two. Raise the Could I by one. potentially assist? In what way? Since uh, I mean, I at least have some familiarity here with Paris. Okay, help navigate. So sure, go ahead. Um, so to an assist, you would what? What are you going to use to an assist? That's a good question. Uh, I'm kind of feeling like perhaps reason. And would that be engineering with architecture? Or I, I wonder if that wouldn't be an, an academia. Academia? Uh, okay. Academia. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to, if you're familiar with the area, that's where I would, would put that from. Okay. Uh, or no, wait. Uh, what's the one that's mapping? Is that engineering? Engineering has architecture. That's kind of why I was wondering. Oh, okay. Um, uh, otherwise, is there another mapping? Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's look here. I mean, survival has orienteering. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was Which looking at cryptography, mapping. cryptography under, uh, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Not cartography. No, nope, not cartography. <laughs> nope. I mean, I got, uh, <laughs> tell me, let, convince me. Cryptography. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that's why I was like, don't you have that? Uh, convince yeah. me that architecture helps you in this. In this assist. I mean, I'd rather go academia if that's an option, but <laughs> just from, I mean, I was just kind of going by what the focuses underneath the skills were. Um, it's largely based on, you know, city layouts and, and knowing your, knowing what parts of, you know, like, uh, it's a little bit too foggy to see the Eiffel tower or Notre Dame, <laughs> uh, but you might be able to kind of make out some of the buildings and know which buildings are starting to get newer as you move out towards the, the edge of the city where an airport might be. You could use that. Okay. So, um, you have to roll. You just need one success. Your success can be added then to, um, bug eaters success. And he needs a two. He needs two successes. 
Insight and engineering. All yeah. right. Well, we'll see. Here goes nothing. Hey, one, hey, success. one success. All right, Rob. Uh, you can now do your your crazy uh, talent. Mm-hmm. And you only need one success on this. Oh, boy. Nice. Whoa. That's cool. four successes. That's four successes. <laughs> So like, uh, yeah, I see him yeah. start to steer towards the street that I know ends in the cul de sac and go, no, not there. All right. So uh as you yank on that wheel really hard, Bug Eater, and you go down another street, you see a manhole cover start to open up, and you Ooh. see a ghoul's head pop out. And it's too late. It looks around, it's too late. It sees the headlights of the uh, car shine in, in its orangish eyes. You recognize this ghoul. Hey, Trippy. Yeah. Bye, Trippy. Just as you hit him and his head goes flying off, smacks onto mm-hmm. the windshield as you're driving and just kind of looks at you with this really blank stare before it goes rolling off behind you. The motorcycle swerves. All right. So, uh, Bug Eater, that was uh, your turn. Uh, who would like to go next? Um, I can sh- try and shoot at the motorcycles. Okay. All right. So you're going to roll down the window. You're going to lean out. All right. I'll take a momentum. Okay. Yeah, this is difficulty two. Good job on that, uh, Rob. Uh, four Four successes. successes? Nice. Hang on. What's my two? Yeah. What's your handguns? Uh, your fighting is two. So no. Yeah. So you didn't quite get it, but you got two, uh, three, four successes on that. You only need two. So that puts your momentum back up to four. You shoot and uh, you hit the the uh, person who is in the sidecar and he flips and tumbles out. But at the same time, as you fire that that last bullet, you hear a click click in your gun. Because you're out of bullets. Okay. Do you say anything? Uh, yeah. Uh, when the guy goes flying out mm-hmm. in German, I will say that's for making me leave my new clothes. <laughs> uh sir this is uh, uh Timmy Jimmy no yeah Timmy this is Timmy speaking uh sir it sounds like you're out of uh, bullets uh yeah i think that's what that sound means he <laughs> un- he unzips this big like duffel bag that he's been carrying uh, that he jumped into the car with and inside you can see like clothes like probably Clark Gable clothes probably Jimmy and Timmy clothes but then you also see a lot of ammunition and a couple of guns in there. And he's like, here, I think this will work. And he hands you a reload. He looks at Valentino and goes, is that your gun, sir? Uh, It is now. And he's pointing to your, to your, um, machine gun. I think I have something in here for that. And he's digging around and sure enough, he pulls out some bullets and he hands them to you. Uh, here, let me load it up for you. And he takes it and he looks at, at the gun and scratched onto the side of the gun, like scratched into the into the metal. In German, it says Rosebud on it. And and uh, Jimmy looks at it for just a moment or Timmy looks at it for just a moment. Oh, are you a fan of Citizen Kane? I uh, never met the guy. And at the mention of Citizen Kane, you hear oh, well, Orson Orson and Clark Gable sits up. Couldn't stand that movie. Fell asleep. Uh, what's going on? A uh, high-speed car chase, sir. You'd love it. Oh, are we on our way to the uh, to the airport? Jimmy, have you given them directions on where we need to go? I was just about to, sir. But I'm kind of bleeding. Oh, okay. You, driver. You want to go southwest. There's a small airfield uh, just on the outskirts of the city. Um, that's where my airplane's at. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure that they know we're on the way. Uh, Got it. The, the motorcycle is still chasing you. There is a bleeding Jimmy. There are two people who haven't gone this round. I can resolve one of those issues. All right. Which one are you going to resolve? The motorcycle? You can resolve two if you just throw out Jimmy. <laughs> that's true. You can't throw I'll out throw Jimmy. <laughs> He's a trusted confidant and companion of one Clark Gable. I look. have to look up when the CIA was created, so they don't. Well, it'd be, I think, the office of OSI, and it wouldn't be until yeah, 
No, not I mean, until the forties. Right now, I but think now it's probably naval have intelligence. Timmy, we don't we don't need a Jimmy. Oh no, they come true. as a pair. Uh, okay, well, I am gonna fix up a Jimmy because I'm the only one who can fix up a Jimmy. Okay, looks like we need another gonna, Jimmy. Okay, you're gonna have to mm, use we do some, need another Jimmy. You're gonna have to use uh, some medicine, but again, because the car is driving, you have to take this up to a a, a D two. I know your first aid is a D one, but you'll have mm-hmm. to do a D two on this. Is this worth using a momentum? Do you think, fellers? Absolutely. Yes. I'm okay. going to generate momentum up the ass anytime I get to use cars. Ooh, so Okay. Well, I'm using medicine, so I could theoretically generate uh, ass momentum as well. <laughs> Fair. One moment. Good, good, good. Three successes. Three successes. Very good. You get one of those uh, momentum. What packs. is your medicine rating, Matthew? His medicine, it's first aid, it's five. five. So, okay. yeah, that's, so that's, that's a lot. One, two, three, four. Successes. Uh yeah, oh, yeah right. Both successes. of those twos count for two. Those both of those twos would count for two. So there's oh, four, sorry. five successes. Five successes. We're gonna generate successes. Yep. Out now have six guts. momentum. Uh, yeah, you are able to open up. Uh, describe uh, your, the patching skills of 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 Doc as he's patching up Jimmy, and it's chaos in the car, right? I mean, there's the the yeah, nice yeah. thing about this seat about this car is this is one of those luxury cars where you have. A driver's row, which is a bench seat. Right. Then immediately mm-hmm. on the other side is another bench seat facing backwards. And then in the kind of like the where regular passenger seat would be, that's the facing forwards one. And it's the middle uh, part of that back seat that uh, Clark Gable is sitting in. Uh, Jimmy would be sitting to his left and Doc would be sitting to his right. All right. And the rest of you well, are... On the other, you know, Timmy is, uh, Timmy. And we're in a state in the, of quantum uncertainty yes. as far as where anybody else is in the car. Right. Except, right. For, <laughs> except for Bug Eater. Right. Yep. Well, fortunately, uh, in the back of the, the little bag that I carry, uh, there is a little bottle of butyl cyanoacrylate. Oh, so yeah. I managed to take out, take out a little bit of, uh, stuff. It's got some, and- some mercure chrome to clear it up, and then the butyl cyanoacrylate is actually what we know today as super glue. It's probably I don't think that flavors, hasn't been invented okay. yet. That hasn't. No, been it, was invented in, it was invented yet. in 1934. I don't think so. Okay, well, I got something like it. No, I, it's I, that I think paste you have, that we used to. Eat I think in high I think you can probably uh, uh, stuff some gauze in there and try to to get it to stop bleeding. Fine, I've got some turmeric and a little bit of honey. There you go. And I make it into a paste. You got to you got to chew that turmeric. Stick it. I stick chew it to his face first. under a piece of rough cotton that my mother wove. Uh, wait. <laughs> I think the better would just be used a military military grade cotton. You are so. Do you uh, do you rip off his shirt and dive in there and staunch the bleeding, or what are you what are you doing? Uh, well, I'm not going to rip his shirt because once we get to the airport, he's probably going to want a shirt. Did I see the bag full of shirts? Yep. Oh, forget that. Yeah, all, yeah, I'm going to rip open his shirt. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to rip his shirt because his shirt's already bloody. He's going to need a new shirt. So I'm going to rip his shirt. I'm going to do that Bones McCoy thing where you just literally take the whole thing down, the glue and the paint and the 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 honey and the turmeric and the side of fries. No, that doesn't look the, very sanitary, sir. Actually, it's remarkably sanitary because the turmeric has properties that will heal the wound while the honey is in itself sterile. And Jimmy then I seal it in the wound. <laughs> Jimmy looks at Timmy and says, I don't think this man's really been to medical school. Yeah, I don't think so either. I uh, as so you make, too have been to medical as school. As you make a hard turn, Bug Eater, uh, going across the river, you just hear suddenly, the, the fog is really thick over the river, uh, but oh, you no. suddenly hear bells ringing crazily, like just ding, dong, ding, just ding, ding, ding. And you can hear that these are the bells of Notre Dame just ringing like crazy. Just no, I mean, it's, middle of the night why would anybody be ringing the bells of notre dame but the bells are just ringing like crazy and as you pass over the bridge uh a little hole in the fog opens up just a little bit and all of the electric street lights have disappeared and in their place are gas street lights like gas street lights you would have seen in the in the 1800s and you can still hear the bells of Notre Dame just ringing, ring, ring, ring. Do we still have a motorcycle behind us? Yeah, you still have a motorcycle behind you. Who all has gone already? 
I think Valentino's the only one. Valentino's the only one that hasn't gone. Well, uh, I assisted. Yeah, that doesn't count. That's an assist. That doesn't count as your turn. Okay. Uh, Then, yeah, I'll kind of lean out the window and take some shots at the uh, motorcycle. Okay. We're kind of flush with momentum. Yeah, this is a D3. Yeah, Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and spin three momentum. Now, are you going to use your handgun or are you going to use your uh, machine gun? Because it's. I'm going to use the machine gun. All right. You're going to just use one momentum? I'm going to use three. All right. Was it agility plus fighting? Uh, yes, for uh, for ranged attack, it's coordination plus fighting. Coordination, that's much better. Well, one better. Hey, that may be the only thing you need. Oh, nope. one success. Nope. One success. You fire that gun, uh-huh. and ouch, your arm uh, hurts. That, that kickback is really causing your arm to flare up. Ah. <laughs> The car hits a, a pothole in the cobblestone that has come loose and you fly back into the car as you hit another kind of wall of fog momentarily. And when you come back out, uh, look, the, the Notre Dame bells are still ringing and the street lights are back to electric lights. We are now at the top of the round. Who would like to go next? You only need one more success to close out this scene. Does Mr. Gable need any any uh, medical assistance? No, he looks like he's okay. He kind of rubs his head and kind of laughs it off. He thinks this, this is kind of funny. He reaches up um, kind of right in between the two of you who are sitting on the um, uh, on the seat opposite of him because there's kind of like a, a box in between on the seat. He flips that open and inside is like a radio unit and he picks it up and he jiggles the, the little handle. Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is Clark. Uh, we've run into some trouble at the hotel. We're on our way. Mm-hmm. Looks at his his watch. Looks at Bug Eater. What do you think, son? How many more minutes? Mm. Few. I don't know. I yeah. have. What's, uh, what's ten, my best estimate? Ten, ten minutes. Yeah, ten minutes. Good, good, good eye, son. Yeah, we'll be there in ten minutes. Have the plane ready to go. Oh, I've got a bunch of people with me, too. Uh, they're going to make sure that they've got seats f- for them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stupid Hitler. And then he hangs up the, the radio device and he's like, this is a lot of fun. Um, but you better step on it. But yeah, he looks you fine. Got it. He looks fine, Matthew. Okay. All right, Bug Eater, what you going to do? I'm going to step on it. All right. You have, are you going to use Born to Drive again? I'm going to use Born to Drive. Uh, okay. The base difficulty is currently three or two. Yes. It's back to three now. Okay. There. It has to be three before I can use Born to Drive. Right. I'm going to use Born to Drive for to drop it down by two. Okay. And then I will use one momentum to get an extra die. So is that two dice that, that we're using? Three momentum. Okay. So you're, yeah. Oh, you're so using have, three momentum. So you're going to use using three momentum. Their... Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have three dice and need only one success. Okay. So. Yeah, cool. Yeah, two successes. You get one momentum Four back. successes. Four successes. Oh, yeah, because you've got... My your... vehicles is five, and my focus is cars. There you go. I am built for a purpose. There you the go. the purpose is drive. Yeah, you do. You step on it. Uh, at one point, you think you hear some sirens of a police car following oh, you no. in the fog, but the fog is really thick, and it is very hard um, uh, uh, for anybody to follow you. That... That may not be as hard as they, they're saying, because uh, using Born to Drive increases the complication range. Oh, oh no. so yes, you hear the <laughs> you hear the the French. Uh, suddenly, you see a red light kind of flashing <laughs> behind you, <laughs> and uh, and now that now you have to shake off some police officers. Fortunately, there's a roundabout coming up. I reach out my hand and grab onto the pole at the center of the roundabout so that uh-huh. we can like whip around. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that, that I'm sure style. I'm sure that will work. A uh, difficult this is a really big extreme when you're gonna have to have a difficulty of four for that. I'm, one I'm not to, a, to yeah, work. Well, of course I'm okay. not actually doing oh, that. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, oh, yeah. come on. Matthew wanted to shove some honey into some guy's open wound, so first sure. of all, not in his open wound, because the open wound is full of turmeric. The honey <laughs> covers the wound once you close it with turmeric. It's like you, you people have them. never been to medical school. And then you cover it with ants just to be sure. 
they're going mean, no, to kick the out skin. the best medical schools. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Valentino, what would you guys like to do? Well, I don't want to shoot at Legion Darm, so no. I'm going to... Uh, I'll try to keep an eye out, basically, as we come to this roundabout. Okay. Yeah, look for, for one of those the... weird turnoffs that maybe yep, you can lose exactly. them in the roundabout. Yeah. Or, or like a flower bed or something like that that we should just be able to like drive over and get oh, back. Oh, yeah, throw some dirt and stuff. Yeah, there you go. All right, so that would be an observation plus uh, insight. Okay, uh, I will spend a momentum. Okay. Two successes. Oh, very nice. Two successes. Yes, you do see a, uh, a big, nice flower bed that must have been uh, made earlier that day, and you tell Bug Eater to turn into it. Uh, describe describe what happens, please. Uh, yeah, so Dutch has, has, like, basically was, like, peak, like poking out of the... Uh, window, uh, cause he was still looking for the motorcycle. And when he sees the cops, he like pops his head back in and then go like base actually just slaps bug eater, like in the ear and go like, so he's like right behind bug eater slaps him in the, in the ear on the right side. And then with the other side over his shoulder points and goes flower bed. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so you drive through that kicking up Straight all through. sorts of, of dirt and flowers Creating a shortcut across the uh, the roundabout, right? The police, That's though, fine. the police, uh, they do follow the rules, right? They know that you're not supposed to do it. But they're also uh, so shocked. Ah, the fleurs! Uh, as they stop and scream to to look at the at the the mash flower bed, and you see them shaking their fists at you as you guys exit the roundabout and head off to the airport. Congratulations, you guys made it through. And got Clark Gable out. Uh, you still got a few minutes before you get to the airport. Uh, Clark Gable looks around at the group of you and says, hey, nice, nice going, boys. And he kind of waves his little uh, radio phone device. Uh, looks like it acts like a regular phone, but it's it's radio operated. Um, any of you boys need to make a call before we get to the airport? Uh Yeah. Okay, he hands it I'll to you. Reach for it. Okay, this is just like a regular phone. Yep. Uh, Dutch will dial the uh, number for uh, section, section M. M. All right. Hello, may I direct your call? I'll say like, uh, hey, uh, try to swing by the farm supply supply store, but Franklin wanted a turkey. One moment, sir. And you hear. Prup, prup. Um, um, yes, um, hello, uh, hello, uh, Brigadier, uh, Fennessy speaking. Hey, Brigadier Dutch. Ah, Aubrey, uh, yes, yes, um, I take it you've made it to Paris? Uh, we have, uh, Ah, good, we... good, listen, listen, um, once you make contact with the researcher at the library, um, you may be tempted to stay in some of the hotels that are close by. I would... Advise against staying in the Hotel Red Iron. Uh, we got word late this evening that uh, that place is crawling with Nazis. Uh, apparently there's some plot to kidnap uh, American actor Clark Gable or some such nonsense. Mm-hmm. Way ahead of you there, uh, sir. Um, we actually encountered those and uh, are now uh, have now joined Clark Gable's security team. Uh, and we're heading for the airport. We did make contact with the researcher, and that researcher was um, very nearly killed by oh my. Uh, Nazi operatives, and, no. uh, specifically the ones we encountered in Belgium. Which which so, Nazis in Belgium? Uh, Mon- Montag, Montag and, Dienstag. and Dienstag. Oh, those two. You can just hear his as- exasperated voice on the other side of the line. Of course, it's like long-distance radio, so it's like, oh, yes, those uh, are. Mm. Um, uh, so, uh, what did you find out? Uh, they, uh, the researcher believes that it is in fact uh, Egypt, where one of the uh, keys is it the keys mm-hmm. uh, can be found. Um, so we are going to try to make our way to Cairo. It was ah. outside of Cairo, right? That's what he said. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, far west of Cairo. Um, sure. 
okay, uh, yes, yes, um, yeah, ah, oh, very good, very good, um, were you able to, uh, to pay Mr. Dupree? Uh, we were. I, I left on a little bit, but he is, uh, in peril, as it were. The, you know, he, he's now a known associate of ours. So I don't know what you guys can muster, but and he like looks over at Valentino. I think we would sure appreciate if you were able to either extract them or at least give him some form of security. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, and you hear paper shuffling and books falling over. Uh, Mrs. Cobblepot or Kettlepot, Mrs. Kettlepot. Oh, uh, sorry, I forgot. Um, yes, yes, uh, uh, yes. I will make sure that we have uh, two men. Should that be enough? Two men to go and um, show up as assistants or long lost friends to keep an eye on him. Sure, is he the, is he the only muster. one? Uh, no, there's another one. Hey, Valentino, you remember the name of the other researcher, the one that actually got grabbed? Uh, I can't recall. Yeah, Halen Pontus Halen. Halen. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's a. There's also a, a Halen. Um. He was accidentally grabbed by the Nazis, thinking that they were getting our man. Ah, oh, stupid Nazis. Um, so you might want to keep an eye on him as well. I don't know if they're ever going to work out that he is, in fact, not really involved. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, uh, Halen and uh, uh, Dupree. Yes, we'll, we'll get a couple of men down there. And um, how did you find his research skills? Uh Excellent. We basically left him for a couple of hours and he managed to crack it. Besides, he's already very familiar with uh, the, what are they, like the enlightened ones. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, he's already familiar with them and also familiar with some of the uh, beasties that we've ran into. So I ah, would say good. he would be a boon to the, excellent, to the department. Excellent. Uh, considering Brussels didn't work out, we may look to try to establish headquarters in Paris then. Uh, uh, yes. That would be interesting. And if you do, you might want to uh, get somebody on this fog. Fog? Yeah. I mean, it's a weird fog. And uh, I mean, I, and like he'll just like look around and he's like, we did suddenly move to Gaslight and Cobblestone Streets, right? That wasn't just me. No, oh yeah, that was that was that was definitely not paved. Okay. Yep. So, uh, yeah, we we may have briefly passed through somewhere. Hmm. Okay. Somewhere. So Nazis, weird mm-hmm. fog. Any other mm-hmm. things that you ran into? Uh yes, we ran into, and he looks at everybody else. Ghouls. Ah, ghouls. Sense what they. Yes, um, I think and that's what how, they call themselves. how did you interact with them? Were they cooperative? No, they were very hostile. Um, hmm. And uh, tell them we mostly lit them on fire. We yes, we had to set a few of them on fire to mm-hmm. uh, to get out. Well, we have run into some ghouls before, and they generally tend to be agreeable when you're ready to negotiate with them. But hmm, I can understand, especially. Well, uh, were by they the hungry? time we encountered by the time we encountered the ghouls, mm-hmm. uh, the Montag and Deanstag had already been dealing with them, so they might have uh, riled them up. I see. Um, did anybody get bit? Bug eater, you get bit. Yeah, yeah. Bug eater got bit. Did I don't it think break it broke the skin? much, but did it break the skin? I don't think so. We haven't had a chance to check. Uh, okay, that's um, that's troubling. Keep um. Keep an eye on him, Dutch. Um, let me know the the instant you can if he starts acting uh, out of sorts. All right. Okay, so where exactly are you now? Uh, we are actually heading to an airfield outside of Paris. I am literally talking to you right now in actor Clark Gable's uh, radio phone machine. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. Fascinating. And oh yeah, uh, um, where are you I going? Like, uh, he's he's getting on a plane and presumably heading back to to the good old U.S. of A. Oh no, we're going to Monaco. <laughs> All right, I guess he's going to Monaco. Um, after that, I think we'll try to figure out uh, a good way for us to get a, get to Cairo. 
Okay. Okay. Um, yes, yes. And you hear more shuffling of papers and, you know, the pause as he's about to say Mrs. Kettlepot again. Uh, yeah. and then you hear a big, like books fall over uh, one, one moment. I'm sorry. Um, we haven't really had a chance to unpack everything yet. Uh, hold on, hold on. Um, you hear the phone go down and go blast. Where is that? Where is that? Oh gosh, damn. I need a assistant as quickly as, ah, yes. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, it's going to take you at least a day or so to fly to Cairo. Um, and you're going out into the desert. We'll see exactly where we're going. Um, but yes, our destination does seem to be a, a an in fact lost city out in the desert. So the how for- exactly we're going to get there, we haven't quite worked out. And what's the name of this for this lost city? Um, I th- it's just called the City of the Dead. I think. Oh, the Forgotten City, the Dead City. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes. Um. This was when I was a boy. I had a chance to meet an explorer by the name of Doctor Jacobs. This would have been oh, oh, around nineteen uh, seventeen. Yeah, nineteen twenty, I believe, is when I met him after the Great War. Um, mm-hmm. He was at one of our local adventurers clubs. He gave a speech. Uh, I'm familiar with the with the story. Lost city. Something happened in the middle of the night. The city was covered with sand and. Uh, was never seen again, and the stories yes. he told about the 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 craziness. I just thought it was just a. Quite honestly, I think he just spent too much time in the sun and baked his brain. <laughs> uh, a- anyway, um, I'm going to make sure that you are properly geared up uh, before you make the trek to this forgotten city. Good luck finding it. Um, here's a contact. Uh, I would like for you to meet Rusty Stowe in Cairo at the Cafe of Kings. He'll know that you're coming, and he should have a uh, quite an assortment for you. All right. Uh, let's see. We will, uh, what else? Uh, we'll get a, a team to Paris to protect uh, uh, Dupree and the uh, other fellow. Um, anything else? Oh, oh, uh... We did find the body uh, under the rubble. It was indeed a Black Sun agent. Uh, the one that okay. you said there was a fight and he was shot. Uh, and we have identified him. Uh, he is Herman Mitvokville. Looks like the Black Sun is indeed trying to keep their mission of a uh, uh, secret from, from us. Mm. Unfortunately, you can tell your doctor friend, we have not been able to find our doctor yet. Oh, do you think he was taken? I don't know. Uh, There were several people that did die, and we have found some body parts, but I don't know if any of them are the doctor. So right now we are listing him missing in action. Okay. Uh, You hear a door open and a door close. Uh, Yes. Uh Uh Um, The Nazis apparently have been digging around in Egypt for um, the last decade or so. Uh, yeah. Uh, mysterious artifacts and such. But uh, So do be careful with, with that. There's probably well, a good chance that you're going to run into some. Uh, yeah, I'd say better than good. Okay, well, uh, you have certainly had quite the couple of days. Yeah, I thought I was here to do research. Yes, well... Uh, very good, very good. I will let your superiors know that you're doing an ex- excellent job and uh, keep up the good work. Is there anything you have for me that you would like to ask of me? Uh, anything else? Anything else you want to ask or try to get? If you if you have a contact who's going to get, get us maybe uh, guns and uh, some clean shirts, that's oh. probably all we need. Yes, I will make sure that you are outfitted for a long desert adventure. Great. I uh, will call you once we have made contact. Very good. Very good. Thank you for checking in. Keep up the good work. Good luck. Thanks. And he hangs up the phone. I'll Clark, hand it back. Clark Gable just looks at you and says, just who the hell are you boys? Uh, actually, we work for Spencer Tracy. <coughs> that son of a... 
Hmm. <laughs> Well, I must say that uh, from what I've seen, you guys are very, very good. And you start to pull into an airport and it is a private airport and you do see a very shiny plane waiting on the runway. And he's like, come along, we're all going to Monaco. And from there, I can probably get this plane or at least a plane to fly you to Cairo. Great. Thank you. Everybody get, gets out. The engines on the propeller are already started up. It sounds like you can hear some kind of siren or some engines or cars approaching there are a long ways off even through the fog uh you can tell that they're a long ways off but there seems to be a rush to get everybody uh aboard the plane so everybody boards we yeah, rush aboard the plane okay you all get aboard the plane this is a very nice private plane of the time this is not like a passenger plane instead of having rows of seats the sides of the plane are lined with very lush leather couches all the way down, perfectly upholstered. There is a wet bar in the back of the plane. Uh, there is, uh, you know, a closed off area that presumably goes back to some kind of a sleeping area. You know, as you board the plane, uh, Jimmy and Tibby both take their seats uh, towards the front of the plane, kind of nodding at each other like, good job, you know, buddy. Uh, it's pretty clear that these are brothers. Uh, they are not only dressed identically, but they look identical. Uh, Gable looks around and spins around and goes, ah, I um, want to make sure that you boys have met Jimmy and Timmy, my uh, loyal assistants and bodyguards. Uh, as we go through Europe, avoiding uh, Hitler's crazy, crazy plans. And then from the cockpit area comes a very pretty young woman. Uh, she's wearing a nice business suit, blonde hair, and uh, she looks at everyone uh, everyone, and, and looks at Mr. Gable. Uh, Mr. Gable, I believe we are ready for takeoff. Ah, Kimmy. Good, good. Uh, then let's let's make haste. Let's get to Monaco. And, I'm uh, sorry. Her name is Kimmy. Her name is Kimmy. <laughs> Kimmy and Timmy and Jimmy. Yep. And my pilot's name is Lemmy. Well, have a seat, gentlemen, and uh, we shall be off. And uh, you all take a seat. The plane taxis down the runway. It flies off into the night. You don't get very high up before you break the, the thick fog bank and you can see the lights of Paris from below shining through the fog. It's actually quite pretty, uh, you know, in, in hindsight through the crazy adventure that you've just been on. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's like this, like if you put a light or Christmas lights under a, a sheet or something, you just see this twinkling and beautiful lights as you fly off south towards Monaco and you realize that it's been exactly one week since your adventure began. Critical Hit Punch Hall Nazis is a production of Major Spoilers Entertainment and was produced and edited by me, Stephen Schleicher. If you would like to get a behind-the-scenes making of this episode, be sure to check out the GM Roundtable Octum Cthulhu Edition at our Patreon page, patreon.com slash major spoilers each week i discuss my plans for the upcoming game session and dr brad will is there to share his reactions and advice on how to be a better game master i will warn you though there are spoilers galore in every installment of the gm roundtable octoon cthulhu edition so if you don't like spoilers and don't want to know what i am planning next don't listen to these episodes though i will say if you do listen, you'll be able to see how and where the players throw a wrench into my plans, and you're also going to have greater insight into the world that's being built into this campaign. This week, we didn't have any named NPCs, so no shoutouts to our associate producers this week, but next week, we'll feature a lot of surprises, and more than a few of our wonderful patrons will become NPCs in this game. You want your name to appear as one of these NPCs in future episodes? All you need to do is become an associate producer at patreon.com slash major spoilers. Don't forget, we want you to record yourself doing your best on critical hit and send it to us at podcast at major spoilers.com and your voice will join the growing chorus of fans just like Brian Brockman did this week. Again, you don't have to be a patron to send in your recording and we hope you do it soon. Thanks again for listening and here's hoping all of your dice rolls are critical hits. This podcast is copyright 2023 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.